Hey guys, we are so excited to finally start our podcast and talk about all things scary and terrifying. We have been spending a lot of time coming up with ideas on what we should talk about to keep y'all entertained. It took a lot of brainstorming to come up with the catchy name that we both agreed on, but we finally found the perfect name. We are the Deadly Dolls. The Deadly Dolls. <laughs> That's not really smooth, but it's okay. <laughs> Welcome to our spook tech. Booktastic podcast with Faith and Maddie. We will be uploading every Thursday to YouTube and eventually we'll have our um, podcast available to stream on other platforms like Spotify. Today's podcast will be starting off our series in each state's most popular cold case. Our following podcasts will include different series, but we will get through all of the states at some point. If you are all interested in this podcast and would like to hear more about the series, then we will upload um, about the series more often. Today we are starting off with Missouri's most famous cold case. So for Missouri, it gave us we it gave us the Interstate 70 killer. We don't really understand why it's Missouri's top cold case, but there it is yeah since it follows along it follows along i-70 so not all of the killings are in missouri so but this is the top cold case for it i guess right the interstate killer <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i didn't know whether i should say the interstate 70 killer or just the interstate killer so i'm just gonna say the interstate killer is a man who is an unidentified American serial killer who killed six store clerks in the Midwest in 1992. There may be more linked to the murders, but they do not know. <laughs> they gave him his nickname due to the murders being so close to I-70. They start from Baltimore, Maryland and run down the west to the Rocky Road Mountains. It runs through major cities including Denver, Topeka, Kansas City, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Columbus, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. At first, the murders were believed to be random until they were linked because each took place at a shopping mall off I-70. All victims were killed at their work. So all six, all his six first victims were all killed with the same weapon, which was a semi-automatic 22 caliber pistol. They began on April 8th, 1991, with 26 year old Robin Falder. Sorry, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> she, wa uh, she was found shot to death at the store where she worked in Indianapolis. Um, and then, following three days after Robin was murdered, or yeah, three days after Robin was murdered, 23 year old Patricia Smith and 32 year old Patricia Majors was. They were both shot to death. They worked together at a bridal shop in Wichita. Three weeks after that, 24-year-old Nancy Kitts Miller was shot to death in the boot store where she worked at in St. Charles, Missouri. Four days after that, 37-year-old Sarah Blessing was shot and killed inside her health shop in Raytown, Missouri. The gun used on the previous woman was also linked to a murder of a 40-year-old Michael McCown. He was killed in a ceramic store in a shopping mall near I-70 on April 27, 1992. Okay, so with that one, that could- Okay, what if somebody, like, noticed all the murders that were happening? Because that's not the same MO. Like, they killed a man yeah. and not women. So I'm wondering, what if somebody took advantage of, like, the killings and, like, killed somebody they just didn't like i don't know. i think he died i think he got shot because um he w he saw the guy doing it or whoever was doing it he might have been like at the wrong place at the wrong time kind of deal he might have seen him so he was like well i can't let you run off but I, they said that somebody saw him before and they got away. Like, he didn't kill them. Well, there was, like, I think there's multiple. Um, I think there's multiple people that kind of, like, saw him. Because there was this one girl saying that um, 
it looked like her shop was being targeted next and I think her shop was targeted but she just wasn't at work at the time it was somebody else unfortunately that he murdered um, but she was describing some man that was seen multiple times in the shopping mall by her store kind of checking it out and it was suspicious so yeah there's multiple people who were kind of like well yeah I guess I did see some guy being suspicious and just being here several days a week um so were those the first six victims that were killed with the same weapon right there so Michael McCown Sarah Blessing Nancy Kitzmiller Patricia Smith Patricia Majors Robin yeah those were the six first victims all killed with the same gun okay so he had to have been linked to that murder because he was killed with the same automatic which means they have the they must have the casing and it must have made the same mark from the gun i don't i don't know if you know that i that's a little well, it was like forensic they're, saying, <laughs> they're just saying the gun with the gun used on the previous woman was linked to another murder so they don't know for sure if it just so happened to be the same gun in on a shopping mall near i-70 where the guy was dead or killed um it wasn't confirmed i need to sneeze <laughs> it wasn't a confirmed like it was the same killer but it's it was it, says linked it's linked, it. it was linked to the murder because of the weapon and they can yeah because of the weapon it's because it makes the same marking when it comes shooting out of the gun yeah i don't like i'm not really for sure what that's called but it um leaves I mean, like, like the anybody same... could have the same i mean like most people could have the same gun it's just linked to it because of the gun and because of the location it's just not well, the same you like... can have the same gun but the bullets don't make the same indentation with every gun and i think that's what it is i don't know something about it'll like shoot out the same way of every single bullet like every single bullet will have the same marking on it i think they were all shot in the oh, back of the head i want to say i'm not 100 percent sure they oh. were all, i think they're all shot in the same way but i'm they don't um Date i don't that. think they i don't think they said how okay um, well then there were similar killings in texas on september 31st fifth in 1993 mary ann a 15 year old 50 <laughs> sound like i said 15 a 51 year old clerk in fort worth was shot in the head and killed about a month later 22 year old amy vess was killed in a similar fashion so they were executed yeah 35 year old vicky webb was shot at a houston gift shop but she managed to survive the Texas shooting were never officially linked to the Midwest killing spree. So, okay, so it's saying basically they don't know for sure if those were the same. It's just yeah, there happen so to be so many. The Texas ones, um, yeah, the Texas shootings were never officially linked. They were just kind of similar MO and they happened I don't think in the same I time think... range. Oh, yeah, they did. Well, yeah. it happened like a year later or yeah, it I... happened over a year later. I'm How can sure they link that to that? I seventy though. I mean, I don't know. Maybe just because it's the same mo, like um, the type of woman he would ki they would kill. I don't know if the girl or a guy. Um. But yeah, so Vicky Webb was the one that was able to probably get more of a identifier on him. Um. So the problem with like not knowing who the killer is, is you cannot, you like can't link all of these murders together officially because you we obviously haven't caught the killer and they haven't told us if the those first six it makes sense, but like how can you randomly link the, I mean, I guess they have their reasons, but like to they me were just, it sounds a it, little far fetched to be able to say that a year, like a year over a year and a half later the man started killing it but they do do that they do continue killing and that's why yeah that's i mean yeah, they were just saying they were similar killing so they might have serial killer does the similar 
like a same the same fashion but other than that they're not really yeah that's crazy <laughs> so we have a couple of suspects um do we have the names yeah we do have the names Okay, so Patricia Smith and Patricia Majors murders, a customer walked in just minutes after the women had been murdered and caught a glimpse of the man, so they were able to give a drawing to the police for the police sketch or a sketch for the police. And the suspect is believed to be <laughs> to believe to be a male born around 1949 and 1959. Uh, five eight to six foot, believed to have sandy blonde or reddish hair, lazy eyelids, and a high forehead. There were many witnesses at different cases. Police put together a sketch using the eyewitnesses' accounts, and they said they got the best description from the customer that I stated earlier, that from the murder of Patricia Smith and Patricia Majors, which was in on April 11th 1991 um they a lot of people suspect that the murder the murder name I don't, don't know how to think the murderer's name is actually they believe it is Neil Falls and I don't know I know I this is a younger picture of Neil Falls because this is when he would have been around that age of if he was born in 1949 and 1959 around the beginning of the killings he would have been honestly I'm terrible at math so please help me out here he would have been 41 when the murder started Gee. Well, we know. also have reasons why we think he is not the killer. Yes, many. There has. Oh, okay. Neofall is believed to be the killer because he is around the age of the murder. We'll never know if he is guilty or not due to being shot. Oh, okay. So this man. This is this is what's crazy is. Neil Falls ended up getting shot by a sex worker in Charleston, Virginia. She shot him in self-defense because she said he was pulling... I think he said she said he that had, he was pulling... He had stuff in his uh, trunk. He had, like, multiple... He had, like, tape, rope. Yeah, but I think she pu he pulled a gun on her and told her to get into the car or he was going to shoot her. And then the reason we believe that he might not be be the killer is the M.O. Like, this... His M.O. doesn't fit the murders of the other woman. Yeah. Um, he had several weapons in the trunk yeah. because the I-70 killer only used the caliber. He told Heather... I'm either going to jail for murder or rape. So that's why... And yeah, the I-70 killer didn't touch his victims, which was noted. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. He and he, the yeah. killer only murdered in rage and killed a woman working alone. So yeah, I don't think that's him. I mean, he's really close. I mean, I guess the women working alone, it makes sense, because if it's like women working alone that so if she was a sex worker, she would have been working, and she would have been alone. But if you but, guys seen his picture and seen the drawing, his they do look very very similar. Mm -hmm. I I think you found a guy that also looked similar, but I do not know his name. Um, he is. Uh, I believe his name's Irv Baumeister. I don't know if you it's Herb Herb I don't know Herb Herb Baumeister 
That's what his name I is. remember that name. Like, it sounds familiar. Give me just a second. <laughs> Just kidding. Plus. Okay, it won't let me. Okay. Sounds very familiar, but I don't know. Like, they both have high foreheads and lazy eyes. Anyways, Neil Falls, I don't believe, is the killer because of all of that. Um, it's not close to I-70. Not the same weapon. Obviously tried to rape the female. And... Um... Does he? It just doesn't match his mo. So, like, the cold case is still open today. Many people have tried to come forward about who they thought it is or who they think it is. Some people say they think it was just a trucker that was going on a killing spree that never got caught. Many people say it was Neo Falls. Many people say it was my dad. It was my dad. A lot of people have been claiming that it is their family. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to go check that out. Um... This cold case is still not resolved to the to today. I am speaking on 6-23-2021. This case of the I-70 killer is still open and if you have any idea or any i don't know any clues that could lead them to solving this case i would step forward and give the authority your thoughts or i don't know what you call it yeah if you guys want to go to unsolved.com and look up the i-70 killer there's more information there um the comments include tips other people have written which some of them are crazy um there's a send a tip line at the very top of that website if you guys have anything um i don't know what else all right thank you for listening to our first podcast ever we are so 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 excited to be starting this i'm sorry if this one was not like that detailed or interesting please please leave us notes on what we can do better or whatever we are open for improvement of course always and we want to be uploading more i mean we'll upload every week and we're just super excited and to start this i don't know how many times i can say it. i'm just like <laughs> overly filled with joy that we're actually getting our podcast out there and i just like it just makes me happy to be doing this, I guess, because this is, like, my dream, man. <laughs> and... um, if you guys have any, like, topic ideas or topics you want us to talk about, f feel free to comment that. Um, we have, like, should we say what other topics? Obviously, we're doing the 50 most popular, ever, the state's most popular cold cases. Mm-hmm. And if you have any ideas, go ahead and shoot it to us because we would be open to anything. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching and I hope you become a fan or even just, I don't know, family. Yeah. <laughs>